Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. In this video today, we're going to be talking about volume of solids. And I mean like solid shapes. So these would be 3D shapes. Okay, so you'll notice that we're not talking about, you know, triangles. We're talking about pyramids, okay? We're not talking about circles, we're talking about spheres. So it's more, I wish I could draw like some 3D shapes on here. I'm not artistically gifted. <laughs> so, you know, maybe just Google, you know, 3D pyramid and you can kind of see um, what it would look like. But anyway, we're trying to figure out how could we determine the volume of these solid, you know, 3D shapes. And it's really not too bad. I've laid out some formulas here. These are not formulas we expect our Math 1 students to, to memorize by any means. So um, if you want to, go for it. But I don't even have these memorized. I, I would just look them up if I needed to know. <laughs> so these are highly likely that it will ask you on a quiz or test to to do volume of solids, but they will give you the equations. And Math 1, like I said, will give them to you, okay? Um, but these, they'll kind of phrase it in word problems, so let's just dive right in. I've listed um, just some common ones here that are frequently asked. We're, we're only going to look at sphere, cone, and cylinder, okay, sphere, cone, and cylinder. We're not going to do a pyramid example, but I wanted to throw it on here just so you can refer back to it if, if you need to. So let's just dive right in to see how this works. So the radius of a sphere is 7.4 centimeters. Find the volume of the sphere to the nearest tenth. So that sounds kind of scary, to me at least. I mean, it's a, it's a lot of information. It seems like um, anytime you're talking about a 3D object, it's in radiuses and volume, and it just seems like a lot. Um, but it's, it's really not too bad. We're just going to follow the formula that it's given us. So we're talking about spheres, so we're looking at this formula right here. So the formula we're going to be using is V equals 4 thirds times pi times R cubed. Okay. So it tells us the radius is 7.4. So, and then it wants us to find the volume. So we're looking for V and it tells us V equals 4 thirds pi times 7.4 cubed. All right, so um, V equals 4 thirds pi times 7.4 cubed. Okay, so notice I'm only putting in parentheses to 7.4 cubed. That's the only part that's cubed. It's just the R, not, not the whole thing. So don't put the whole thing in parentheses, okay? All right, um, at this point, this is a very simple problem that I can put directly in my calculator. So I'm just going to type this in. So I want to know what is 4 thirds times pi times 7.4 cubed. And I see I get a long, fairly long decimal, and if I remember correctly, my instructions told me to round to the nearest tenth. So I'll round this to 1,697.4. Okay, so the volume is 1,697.4. Okay, so not too bad, right? Just filling in the, the formula. Okay, a cone, so we're talking about cone now. Cone has a volume of 10 feet cubed and a height of four feet. Find the radius of the base of the cone to the nearest tenth. Again, sounds really complicated. It's not once we break it down. Okay, so this time for cone, we're using this formula. So V equals one third pi r squared times height. All right, and it tells us the volume. So before up here we were solving for v, which kind of made it easy. Now it's telling us v. So we're gonna have to work backwards a little bit. So v is 10, all right? And then I've got my one third 
I've got my pi, and then I've got my radius. Does it tell me the radius? No. Look, that's what I'm searching for. Find the radius. So r is going to be what I'm trying to find. So I'm just going to leave that as r squared. And h, does it tell me the height? Yes, it says the height is 4 feet. Okay, so at this point, we're solving for r. Um, it's going to get a little complicated just because I have that square there, but don't worry, we'll, we'll handle it. The first thing we need to do is simplify everything we can on this side. I can absolutely simplify the one-third times pi times four. All those are just being multiplied together. Let me go ahead and simplify that. So um, let's see, it's one-third times pi times four. All right, so I'm going to go ahead, and that's a long decimal. I'm going to round it off to the nearest tenth, since, that, since that's uh, what our instructions say anyway for our final answer. I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to do 4.2. All right, so at this point, we've got 10 equals 4.2, and then I still have that r squared. That's what I'm solving for. Now this is 4.2 times r squared. So how do I undo those two? I would divide by 4.2 so that those two cancel. And if I'm gonna do that here, I've gotta do it here as well. So what is 10 divided by, let me just do it over here, 10 divided by 4.2. Again, a very long decimal. I'm gonna round to the nearest tenth. So I've got, I'm gonna bring it up here. I've got 2.4 equals r squared. So that is not my final answer. 2.4 is equal to r squared, but I need it to be equal to just plain r. So how do I undo a square? Well, I take the square root. That cancels out that little two. And if I'm gonna do that here, I've gotta do it to the other side as well. So I'm gonna do, bring it over to show you, the square root of 2.4. And I see, again, long decimal, round to the nearest tenth. So 1.5. So r equals 1.5. So what was the radius? It's 1.5. OK. Um, last problem. So this one says, the volume of a cylinder. So this time we're talking about cylinders. We're going to be using this formula up here. Let me go ahead and just write it down. V equals pi r squared h. So very similar to that one, we just don't have that one third in front of it. Okay, um, so the volume of a cylinder is 865 inches cubed and the height is 10 inches. What is the radius to the nearest tenth? So again, we're gonna be looking for that r value. Okay, we know the v, it told us volume is 865. All right, I can fill in the pi. I'm looking for r because I'm searching for the radius, so I'm trying to find that r, that squared hangs out. And then h, do I know h? Yep, it's 10. So times 10. All right, so kind of a similar situation to the last one. Um, I want to simplify everything I can on this right side. So what is pi times 10? Well, let me check that real quick. What is pi times 10? All right, it will be 30, long decimal, we'll round to the nearest tenth, 31.4. All right, so at this point we've got 865 equals... Um, I think I said 34. I just cleared it. <laughs> I totally forgot what it was. Sorry, JJ. Um, okay. Um, 31.4 R squared. All right, so just like here, this is um, 31.4 times R squared. So how do we undo times? Well, we divide. So those two cancel. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Now, 865 divided by 31.4. 
that would give me a long decimal. I'm going to round to 27.5 equals r squared. Check my spacing real quick. Okay, all right. All right, but I don't want to know what r squared is. I want to know what r is. So again, how do I undo a square? Well, you take the square root. Cancels out the little square. Okay, so if I do that to one side, I have to do it to the other. The square root of 27.5 would be, um, it would be r equals 5.5. Two. Okay, so as you can see, it's really not that bad. It's just, it's, it's pretty much testing you on, can you follow a formula when it's given to you? And they'll give it to you in kind of a complex way, but really all you're doing is plugging what you know into the formula, solving for what you don't know or for what you're looking for, and remembering those basic algebra rules, um, those inverse operations. So anyway, this has been Miss Smith's Math Tutorials.